We did field study and there was this absolutely common denominator of feeling um, uh, the, in um, the inequity of the field, um, the inequity in the, in the realm of participation of women directors, inequity um, uh, in the participation of people of color in the field and also we realized that there is no systemic sort of training available uh, for directors outside this academic um, you know um, structures of MFA BFA so therefore over the over doing research and interviews over the past um, two and a half three years um, in the field to really get to know the pulse of what the field of theater and ensemble creation processes are we realize that we need to create an institute where we practice that so that we no longer just sit down and complain about what is not happening in the field. In fact, we are creating it, we are crafting it, we are structuring it, and we are going to train people in the future. Yes, it's our responsibility to craft this. We are all accountable for this world. No, no facilitator is not accountable only, right? We are all accountable. So change, edit, add on. Uh, this is this is us. Definitely, I'm. Um, um learning from day one, uh, uh, processes, uh, uh, how different uh, uh, directors work with their groups and with their projects. And I think that I'm very, very interested in how they um, uh, develop the concept for uh, uh, directing a play. I remember that I always loved these huge rituals. My hero was Barbara Ann Kew, and she used to come into a space and there was drumming and storytelling and audience participation and all of us got to be there and be in it. Yeah, that's my aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> Allons danser, Colinda. 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 You know, when we create, it gets really serious. It's like we keep it really light and we get really silly and we laugh and we joke. Um, it's really great icebreaker with elderly. Because it brings up, because you can do this with elderly, and then when you start doing stories out of that, because a song would trigger, um, and it's amazing. What's, well, what's interesting is we're very similar and we're also quite different. And um, so listening to people talk about what their emphasis is, what their priorities are in their work, a lot of us are saying kind of the same thing, you know. Uh, a lot of the work is, for example, some uh, community-based or about giving voice to the unheard uh, stories, etc. So a lot of us are quite similar in, in many core values, and yet there's this incredible range and, and variety of how we manifest that and how we express that. And that's been incredibly enriching to, to see and experience. We 
are creating a language uh, for the work that we're doing. That, uh, and a curriculum is sort of evolving uh, from just the, we're walking the road. And the curriculum has evolved, whether it's in song, whether it's in story making, whether it's in movement. A, a curriculum that sort of has a, not the same, but a unified approach and result that we're looking for. And it is being articulated and needs to be written now. It, it's time, I think, to be written and maybe codified in a very loose way. Okay, so it's a ritual uh, answer, <coughs> which we talked about yesterday, and then community organizing, and about the idea that uh, leadership is leadership to be incorporated. So is this a director's and leadership institute? Mm -hmm. How broad is the scope of the director's role? And all these things that I just talked about, and then we said open to the conversation of global aesthetics, issues, perspectives, and whenever possible clarify, well, I guess not. Good. Just to have those ideas up. Well, I, I think those were part of agreements. Uh, yeah, maybe that was part of agreements. Yeah, that but was. it's not a bad thing to keep global aesthetics in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the kind of curriculum I, I think that we've been forming here has been very peer-to-peer -peer based curriculum, um, acknowledging our own um, knowledge base and source and ultimately own individual power that we all hold um, and accessing that. Um, I think a, another part of the curriculum has have, have been very, uh, um, the idea of the intergener intergenerational, um, building a curriculum that's also practice space, but embedded in that practice space and aesthetic, aesthetic based curriculum is this idea of social change being at the core. I mean, we, we, we have the word oppressions up there. I don't know why we are not talking about racism. I don't know why the word seems to, um, we're swirling around it and it's not anywhere on the paper. And what, what that says to me is that <laughs> it still needs to be talked about. Of course, we're here, uh, we were invited here because we're w women or people of color, and which is a rare thing uh, and an important thing the reason why we're here, because we don't often have a space or a place to be recognized for what we do. This is a, um, a self-facilitating <coughs> organic panel in which we are going to invite all the women identified artists in the room to come be a part of it at any time that you feel inspired. The one thing that I'll bring back to my community and try to put into practice is the is the starting the process uh, when i go into rehearsals normally we sit down and have a read through of a script and this completely throws that out the window it's starting the process in a completely different way which is starting with the group and and finding what the group contributes to not the script even yet ju just to to what that sacred space is that we've created here um, starting with physical warm-up, starting with uh, group process and, and uh, interactive activities that, that form bonds within the group and create a place for exploration. very few opportunities for people of color to be able to grow in a specific art of directing um, as a very challenging uh, role and having an institute to be able to provide the structure, the opportunity to exchange ideas with other directors and learn from each other really will push the envelope of what is ensemble directing. The impact will be, there's a kid that I don't know, 
who's 12, 13 years old, who I know 10 years from now, if they've decided to become an artist, will be impacted by this. And that's a beautiful thing to know. I know it. All our training has been the legacy of three basic things. One, genocide against the Native Americans. Two, slavery, slavery about uh, the African Americans. And three, colonization, which is the history of most of the immigrants on this, in this um, country, in North America. So once you're in the context of these three, that's the legacy with which all these structures that exist now have been created. And so for us to come over here and dream of an alternate, there is no role model for us to follow. We are crafting the dream as we speak with elders in the room, with intergenerational participation in the room, and with one uh, sort of stewardship that we will all take accountability to shift conversation for the future generation. So the surprise was a constant, constant participation that we can do it. We, people of color and women, can do it. We are no longer going to wait for the mango to ripe in India. There's an analogy they say that, you know, if you keep waiting under a mango tree for that particular mango to ripen and fall into your lap, you will keep holding an empty basket all your life. So instead of waiting for that particular mango to, <laughs> to ripen, we decided to start tilling the field and plant um, orchards of mango trees. There's a teaching in our that's come to me um, that talks about the sacred tree that stands at the center of the medicine wheel. And I can talk about that the rest of the week because this, what we've just discussed and what we're, our intention is, is what that metaphor is for me. Is that every point on that circle, every person has a perspective that's different than the next one. That we see the sacred tree at the center of the circle differently because we're sitting in a different position around. You can't describe that tree in the middle without having every perspective around. So every point is valid. Every, every perspective is, is needed to describe the sacred tree that stands at the center of the medicine wheel. Thank you.